A blessed day to all of you, dear friends, who are here with us in the uh, Shrine of Jesus, the Divine Word, and also those who are uh, joining us through this live stream, worshiping with us in other parts of the world. <coughs> would like to start this uh, reflection, homily, with a story about a little girl who had a very easy father. He, the father was an engineer and made a lot of money, but uh, had little time to be with uh, his family. Every night, however, the little girl insisted that her father read a story before she would sleep. And this continued for some time till uh, one day the great father who is engineer that he found uh, a solution. He bought an iPad and uh, where he placed the recorded uh, reading of the his child's uh, favorite story. And uh, when uh, the girl would ask him to, uh, to read the story, he would just play you know, the uh, recorded uh, story. The, the girl took that for some time, for a few days, but then protested and refused to accept the recorded stories. And the uh, father asked her, why the records read no? the stories as good as I do? And the girl replied, yes, but I cannot sit on his lap. That is the difference. Maybe the same voice, but I cannot sit on his lap, on your lap. The mystery we are celebrating during the season of Advent and Christmas celebrates the gift of God's presence in our lives. And God has been present specially to the little ones. Today's readings, the visit of uh, Mary to her relative Elizabeth, which is called at times the encounter, no? is loaded with meaning. Biblical scholars help us uh, appreciate better the significance of this story, it is not just a meeting, simple meeting, but indeed brings out a beautiful message of who God is and how he relates with us. The uh, focus, no, the proposal of experts is to pay attention to the dialogue. No, uh, the dialogue between uh, Mary and Elizabeth. Elizabeth's uh, first words are reminiscent of the greeting and praise given to a superior in recognition for her or his advanced status and of the fact that God has had blessed that person. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how does this happen to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? Says uh, Elizabeth. Here, Elizabeth acknowledges the superiority of her young relative, Mary, a status position due to Mary's prior reception 
of God's goodness and mercy. God choosing her as the mother of, her, of his son. Elizabeth keeps Mary's motherhood at the center, the primary focus here. After all, it is her role as mother that she will contribute to the salvation of her people. Mary is the mother of my Lord, as expressed by uh, Elizabeth, a designation which Elizabeth articulates her own submission to this unborn baby and which anticipates already the identification, the identity of Jesus as Lord on the basis of his exaltation. So here we see the reversal of societal convention in this scene of the visitation. As a rule, the lesser greets the greater. The servant travels to the master. The superiority of Jesus over John is highlighted, however, the nature and the exercise of this superior status of Jesus anticipated. So with his coming, these social conventions will be turned upside down. The greater will serve the lesser. In other words, in this gospel account, we see the manner of God loving and saving humanity from the position of service and not of power, as also exemplified by Mary's own example, action, that she goes in haste to visit her relative, old for such thing as childbearing, it must have been extremely difficult for her to bear a child in her old age. <coughs> the gospel says that Mary remained with Elizabeth for about three months before returning home. Mary, the so-called mother of my Lord, the blessed among women, visiting and serving her already anticipates God's own best visitation to his people with the coming of his son. Coming not only in word but indeed in flesh, expressing God's nearness just like what was asked by the little girl. Yes, it is your voice, but what is missing is your lap. No. Meaning the Lord comes not only, not solely with his word, but he comes with his embrace. This is at the, the bottom of this story. The Lord, through these actors in the Mary and Elizabeth, wanted to show already that the way of God relating with us is not from a position of power or force, but precisely from a position of service. What kind of presence do we have to people? Is it expressive of God's presence through our, our kindness, through our service and compassion? 
because many times we operate on a position of superiority that I am more holy that I am more just and treat people and look down people with their difficulties and mistakes it is I do not know what kind of presence would that be the Lord is inviting us just as we enjoy his merciful presence we are also asked to see and evaluate what effect does my present produce presence produce and may the presence of the Lord with his word today and with his presence in the Eucharist and in the community through us may we experience his loving merciful and healing touch as we commune with him in the with his body and blood and that is the Eucharist where once again or again and again he offers us the concreteness of his presence a presence that is motivated again from the point of view of service serving for our salvation and not from a threatening or a presence of power powerful only with his love and mercy but not of threat but indeed of his mercy may we come as we come to the Lord who is merciful may we learn also to be merciful and let our presence be a pleasing presence of God among people Amen.